Tonight, breaking news as we come on the air right now. The U.S. and U.K. taking significant military action against Iranian-backed militants. The emergency meeting in the U.K., the warning tonight from the White House. It all comes 24 hours after militants fired off 18 drones and three missiles toward ships in the Red Sea, their largest attack yet. American and British forces shooting them down. Tonight at this hour, the military action from the U.S. and the U.K. now. The White House tonight saying the U.S. will, quote, counter and defeat these mounting attacks from the Iranian-backed Houthi rebels. Mary Ruth standing by live with what she's learning right now. In New York City, Donald Trump lashing out during closing arguments in the $370 million civil fraud trial against him. Trump blasting the judge in court. The judge telling the defense, control your client. What comes next now for Trump? Aaron Katursky outside the courthouse. In the Northeast, rivers dangerously high with this new storm now set to sweep across the country and right into the Northeast. The tornado threat right now in the South. How much snow will Chicago get? And the East set to get hit again as it barrels right up the coast. Rob Marciano with the track. Hunter Biden tonight pleading not guilty on federal tax charges. The popular country music star testifying before Congress today about the dangers of fentanyl in this country. And Robin Roberts sitting down tonight with Michael Strahan and his daughter Isabella. At just 19, Isabella revealing her battle against brain cancer. The moment she found out, her condition now following surgery and treatment ringing the bell. Tonight, Isabella's strength and bravery and how Michael's daughter hopes to help so many others. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Thursday night. We do begin tonight with breaking news at this hour. ABC News has just learned that the U.S. has just launched a military assault against Iranian-backed Houthi militants in Yemen. A U.S. official at this hour saying these strikes are the first on Yemen since the beginning of Israel's war with Hamas. Tonight, the U.S.-led attacks involve a mix of Tomahawk cruise missiles and fighter jets, the U.K. joining us. The White House warning the U.S. will, quote, counter and defeat these mounting attacks. Also, an emergency cabinet meeting in the U.K. today. Now, this follows months of attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea. 24 hours ago, we learned of the militants' largest attack yet. Their drones and missiles were shot down by the U.S. and the U.K. The militants say their attacks are in response to Israel's war on Hamas. The U.S. intercepting a barrage of 18 drones and three missiles just in this latest attack alone. You'll remember, one of the Houthis' most brazen attacks came in November. These are the pictures. Terrorists hijacking a cargo ship co-owned by an Israeli businessman. That ship tonight, by the way, still being held by rebels. Tonight, this U.S. attack now on Yemen and on these Iranian-backed militants now underway. Our chief White House correspondent, Mary Bruce, leading us off. Tonight, U.S. and British forces unleashing a massive retaliatory strike on Houthi rebels in Yemen after months of costly attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea. A U.S. official confirming the strikes hit multiple Houthi targets in Yemen and involved a mix of Tomahawk cruise missiles and fighter jets. Moments ago, President Biden releasing a statement saying these targeted strikes are a clear message, adding the U.S. will not tolerate attacks on our personnel or allow hostile actors to imperil freedom of navigation, and the president not ruling out taking further measures to protect our people. Just 24 hours ago, the White House warned the Houthis could bear the consequences if they don't stop attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea. Tonight, doubling down. I'm not going to telegraph punches one way or another here. We're going to do what we have to do to, to, uh, to counter and defeat these threats that the Houthis keep throwing up uh, on commercial shipping uh, in the Red Sea. Since mid-November, the Houthis have launched at least 27 attacks, claiming it's in retaliation for Israel's war against Hamas, disrupting one of the most vital shipping routes in the world. The latest attack coming overnight. The Houthis firing a ballistic missile towards a commercial ship in the region, just hours after American and British forces repelled the rebels' largest attack yet, intercepting a barrage of 21 Houthi drones and missiles. One of the Houthis' most brazen attacks coming in November when terrorists hijacked a cargo ship co-owned by an Israeli businessman, landing a helicopter on its deck in the Red Sea. The ship and its 25-man crew still being held by the rebels. Tonight, a Houthi leader warning any U.S. attack will not go without a response. 
All right, so let's get right to Mary Bruce at the White House as we're on the air here in the West. And this U.S.-led attack on Yemen, on these Iranian-backed militants now underway, Mary. It all comes amid concern the Israel-Hamas war obviously could spread beyond Gaza. And I gather this is not just retaliation for the attacks on the Red Sea, uh, but also meant to send a message to the entire region. David, the U.S. is clearly trying to send a message that these attacks will not be tolerated. And tonight, our team on the ground in Yemen reports that five cities have now been targeted and hit, including the capital. But, David, the Houthis have been defiant, adamant that they will push back and counter any American aggression. David, they say they will not back down. All right, Mary Bruce on the breaking news from the White House tonight. Mary, thank you. Meantime, here in New York, former President Trump defying the judge, lashing out in court during closing arguments of his $370 million civil financial fraud trial. From his seat at the defense table, Trump insisting he's an innocent man, attacking the judge and the attorney general. The judge telling the defense to control your client. Here's Aaron Katursky. Tonight, former President Trump launching into unscripted and unauthorized remarks during closing arguments at a civil fraud trial that threatens the future of a real estate empire that helped propel him to the White House. Ignoring the judge's insistence he stick to the facts and the law, Trump went on the attack, calling the case a political witch hunt that should be set aside and casting himself as the victim, saying, I've been persecuted by someone running for office. Trump called himself an innocent man and told the judge, what happened here, sir, is a fraud on me, complaining New York Attorney General Letitia James sued him to get publicity. The judge in the case has already found that Trump overvalued his real estate properties for years, allowing him to get better terms on loans and insurance. Now the court is deciding how much Trump and his business should pay, along with the future of Trump's real estate dealings in New York. And in court today, Trump did make one concession. When his Trump Tower penthouse was valued as if it was three times its actual size, the former president said it was an honest mistake. An attorney for the state said it screams of an intent to defraud. Trump, seated at the defense table, began to attack the judge who implored a defense lawyer to control your client. After five minutes, the judge cut off Trump's remarks, holding up his phone to signal Trump was out of time. Trump then making his case to cameras outside the courtroom. It's a disgrace, and they should pay me damages. In their closing argument, state lawyers saying they proved fraud was central to the operation of the Trump organization's business, and Trump was responsible because the buck stopped with him. The attorney general arguing Trump should never be allowed to do business in New York again. This case is about the facts and the law, and Mr. Donald Trump violated the law. The judge said tonight, David, he will rule by the end of the month whether Trump deserves a penalty. The state wants him to pay $370 million and get kicked out of real estate in New York, a decision that could force Trump to give up control of some of the buildings that bear his name. David? Eric Katursky outside the courthouse tonight. Aaron, thank you. We turn now to the flood emergency across the Northeast. Rivers dangerously high tonight with yet a new storm now sweeping across the country and right into the Northeast again. Coastal flooding right now. This is Babylon, New York, other Long Island towns included. Parts of Norwich, Connecticut tonight under water after a partial dam break there. Images of the powerful storm washing away a summer camp building on Malden Island, Maine. Tonight at this hour, the tornado threat in the south, blizzard conditions and deep snow in the Midwest. There could be significant snow in Chicago by the time this is done. And in the east, set to get hit again. Senior meteorologist Rob Marciano with the images tonight and the forecast. Tonight, families across the waterlogged northeast now bracing for more flooding rain. In Little Falls, New Jersey, the Passaic River reaching major flood stage and has yet to crest. Water is now pouring into this neighborhood. The sun is setting and the streets are filling up. People are being asked to evacuate because the river is going to keep rising through the dark of night. This community seeing its third such water event in as many weeks and preparing for a fourth. Corey Nielsen staying put, but ready to flee if the water gets too high. We'll row up the street and get out that way. Governor Murphy here today urging vigilance. We have no injuries or fatalities in the home, but stays that way. And from the south, surveillance video showing the moment an EF2 tornado struck Bamberg, South Carolina on Tuesday. Winds up to 125 miles per hour. That twister up to five football fields wide. Five football fields wide. That's just an extraordinary size for this twister. Let's get right to Rob again tonight along the Passaic River. He's in New Jersey, and you can see the water there. Uh, we mentioned, Rob, here dangerously high across much of the northeast with more rain, significant rain on the way. 
It is, and this river still hasn't crested yet, David. So these vacuum cleaners are going to be a while before they themselves can get a good rinse. We've got flood watches up already for the next one. We've got blizzard warnings already for the next one in the Midwest. And another severe weather threat tonight across the south, beginning in Little Rock, Shreveport, along I-20. Could be significant tornadoes there into Mississippi and then throughout the day tomorrow across the southeast. All right, here we go with the low itself. It takes a similar track to the last one. Amplifies like the last one. I think Chicago gets a little bit more snow than the last one as this thing makes its way up towards the north and east across the Great Lakes. Heavy rain for just about everybody that got heavy rain last night and big winds as well. Could see some damaging winds. Gets here late tomorrow night into Saturday with more in the way of heavy rain. So just as these rivers begin to recede, they're going right back up again this weekend. David, that park bench underwater, it says it all. Thank you, Rob, again tonight. In Los Angeles, Hunter Biden pleading not guilty to nine felony and misdemeanor tax charges for failing to pay taxes from 2016 to 2019. The plea was entered by Hunter Biden himself during an arraignment in federal court. Prosecutors say he avoided paying $1.4 million between 2016 and 2019 to fund an extravagant lifestyle, they said. He has since paid the IRS back what he owes in taxes and penalties. The trial now set for June 20th, six months away. We turn next tonight to a new Pentagon report finding that more than a billion dollars worth of weapons sent to Ukraine were not properly tracked, including javelins, stinger missiles, and night vision devices. The report, as Congress debates new aid to Ukraine and its troops, are seeing setbacks on the battlefield. ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge in Ukraine for us tonight. Tonight, it's a critical moment for U.S. support in the war. A new report accusing U.S. officials of failing to account for more than half of the sophisticated weapons supplied to Ukraine in a sample that was under review. The Defense Department's Inspector General investigating whether nearly 40,000 items, such as Stinger missiles and night vision sets, were properly tracked just before and in the months after Russia invaded. The report found that more than a billion dollars worth of 1.7 billion in military items under scrutiny were delinquent or not properly accounted for. But the report's finding no evidence that any U.S. military aid to Ukraine has been misused or stolen. At this time, there remains no credible evidence of illicit diversion of U.S. provided advanced conventional weapons from Ukraine. It comes with Congress still not agreeing on continuing to support Ukraine. And now these frontline troops are running low on ammunition. Well, you could really feel the force of this American gun. But these Ukrainian artillery units are now having to limit the amount they fire because of the scarcity of ammunition. The units showing us their stock of just 20 shells. They had around 200 a day just a few months ago. And David, a top U.S. defense official reacting to that report saying the accounting procedures for weaponry sent here are, quote, not practical in a hostile, dynamic wartime environment. David. Tom, thank you for that report tonight. Back here in the U.S. tonight, the FAA announcing a formal investigation of Boeing after that 737 MAX 9 aircraft lost a door plug in midair. A forceful opening line in the agency's statement saying, quote, this incident should have never happened and it cannot happen again. The investigation will examine whether Boeing complied with FAA regulations on manufacturing and safety. The company responding tonight saying it will, quote, cooperate fully and transparently with the FAA and with the NTSB investigations. When we come back here, the breaking news coming in right now. This significant U.S. military action is now underway. What we have just learned here uh, in a moment and later here, Michael Strahan and his daughter Isabella and her deeply personal battle against brain cancer. We are learning more right now on this U.S. and U.K. military assault tonight against Iranian-backed militants in Yemen now underway. A U.S. official telling ABC News the strikes involved a mix of Tomahawk cruise missiles and fighter jets. We now know multiple locations have already been targeted inside Yemen, at least five cities targeted, including the capital of Yemen. This follows months of attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea. The militants have said they're responding to Israel's war against Hamas. The White House has warned repeatedly in the last 24 hours that the U.S. will counter and defeat these mounting attacks from Iranian-backed Houthi rebels. When we come back here tonight, a well-known country star before Congress on this fentanyl crisis in the U.S., and then Michael Strahan and his daughter Isabella and her brave fight against brain cancer. Tonight, emotional first-hand testimony from a country music star about the fentanyl crisis here in this country. Jason DeFord, known as Jelly Roll, appearing at a Senate hearing today, the former drug dealer saying he wants to be part of the solution, urging lawmakers to pass legislation to stop the flow of fentanyl into the country. 
the drug blamed for nearly 200 deaths a day in the U.S. He said, I've attended more funerals than I care to share with you all, hoping to bring more attention to addiction and to mental health. When we come back here tonight, Robin Roberts sits down with Michael Strahan and his daughter Isabella and her brave battle against brain cancer. Finally tonight here, Michael Strahan and his daughter Isabella, at just 19, revealing her battle with brain cancer. Isabella just finished radiation. She starts chemotherapy next month. Tonight, her bravery, her strength, and what they both told our Robin Roberts. How are you, baby? Our dear friend Michael, side by side with his daughter Isabella, as they reveal what they've been facing over the last few months. All right, here we go. Here we go. Soon after starting college, at the University of Southern California this past fall, the then 18-year-old freshman begins experiencing excruciating headaches, unlike any she's had before. What did you think was going on at the time? I thought I had vertigo, because I, I, I looked that up and associated that with walking straight. Doctors suddenly telling Isabella she's developed a fast-growing four-centimeter tumor in the back of her brain, its size larger than a golf ball. I just yeah. remember trying to figure out how to get to L.A. ASAP, and, and it just doesn't feel real. Isabella undergoing emergency surgery the day before her 19th birthday. Happy birthday to you. Learning how to walk again. Looking good. With the help of her twin sister, Sophia. Hey, it's strawberry ice cream after this. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> After a grueling month of rehab, Isabella then moving on to several rounds of radiation treatment. I just finished radiation therapy and I got to ring the bell yesterday. It was great. It was very exciting because it's been a long 30 Yay! sessions. I don't want to like hide it anymore because it's hard to always yeah. keep in hope too. Just kind of be a voice and be a person people who maybe are going through chemotherapy or radiation can look at. I got an amazing daughter, and I know she's going through it, but I know that we're never given more than we can handle and that she is going to crush this. And we love you. We're here for you. And you got this, so. I love you, too. You made it, baby. It was deeply moving this morning on GMA, and every one of us here standing with you, Isabella. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.